All right, guys, another uh, boring ass training video, but uh, hey, gives me somebody to talk to you, like I said. So, we got our training cleaned up here. It's uh, much better than it was. You know, it's not perfect, but uh, it's cleaner. Most guys just, uh, well, most guys don't take the side cover off. They put the flange seals in and call it a day. But we got her cleaned up. We got her painted. Uh, she's all degreased. And uh, got the nose cone there clean. We got to put that back on. New gasket and uh, some sealer. Uh, I always like to use a little sealer uh, on these used boxes, especially this one. You can see where it's been squirming around a little bit. And uh, we're going to go ahead and torque the pinion nut down because uh, I think it's loose. These torque to 150 foot pounds. Uh, I've got the antique uh, Craftsman torque wrench here from my uh, stepdad. I had this for years. I used to use it to torque uh, Briggs and Stratton flywheels on. So uh, now I use it for uh, the nut on the uh, pinion. So uh, it works pretty well for it. Uh, you know, it's long and uh, it's got a lot of leverage. So I'll put you on the stand. We'll throw this back together and. Uh, I take on to a football game tonight and drop them off. It always makes me nervous. I'm sure, uh, if you got kids, you know how it is. Doesn't matter how old they are. Seems like uh, you're never ready for them to uh, be out of your sight. So uh, let's see if we can get a hold of this bad boy. I can stand down here a little bit. A little lot. All right. Oh yeah, it's loose. Most people can't get them tight because uh, 150 foot pounds is pretty damn uh, tight. That's usually what happens right there when you're trying to do it by yourself. There we go. Oh, man. I'll take it out of you. So there we go, 150 foot pounds. I saw the needle hit it. Still turns. So that's good. I'll get out of your way there. Getting a little, uh, Tranny grease here. I'm gonna put a little, little bit of grease on the uh, race there, and uh, I'm gonna give it a little shot of uh, Lucas on the uh, dip. I need to get on this side of the camera so I'm not uh, in your shot. Now we didn't. Uh, we did tighten that pinion nut up. That could change the. You know the setup a little bit, so I'll have a good idea when I drop it down in there. Uh, how it rocks in here. Check the end play or the backlash. A little bit of uh, gear lube there on the pinion. I think that would be good. Didn't feel too excessive. Uh, you know, about six is what they want on a stalker. I think we got at least that. So we got the diff back in there. Uh, we got a little fluid on there. We got the pinion nut torqued down. It's never good when that's loose, but uh, what are you going to do? You know, all I can do is pass the good news along and. Uh, customer chooses to uh, repair it that's fine most of the time people just choose to uh, yeah. let it ride you know what I mean until uh, something catastrophic happens just uh, 
a lot of these guys tow these around. That's probably why that pinion nut was loose. A lot of times uh, when you got them banging around, oh hey kitty cat, behind the uh, motorhome, it can be an issue. Come on, you gotta get out, cat. I'm working over here. I'll pop the seal in that I just dropped on the floor. I'll turn that up there. You can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do need to uh, start rebuilding my shop and putting stuff up higher. I noticed that I do grunt a lot. I apologize for that, but uh, subconscious. So there we go. I'll show you my, uh, I use an old grease cap to put these in with. It works really good. Well, most of the time. Got a little sideways that time. Gotta hit it in the middle. Knock it down to the race. What? He said around seven. He said seven. Oh, I need some money. There we go. Good, we're in all the way down to the race. A little uh, little high temp there on the rubber. Just so uh, it's setting burn up under start up. And we'll put a move the camera back over here. Mm -hmm. Side plate looks a little cleaner. So I'm just gonna put a new O-ring on it. Make sure that bad boy uh, sits down in there proper. And uh, we're going to put a little of uh, aviation Permatex around there to help lubricate that O-ring and uh, seal the tranny up. Normally, you know, you uh, don't need the aviation Permatex and usually it's not on there from the factory, it's just the O-ring, but as the transmission wears over the years, the case gets wear on it. Uh, you know, it's just uh, extra precaution. We're going to put a little uh, gear lube on our uh, bearing there. Give it a shot down in the spider gears. Just getting lubed up. And uh, we'll be going on with this next. You know, a good indication the tabs only go up and down. <clears throat> Let's figure out your bolt location. There's two uh, bolts that are close to each other here at the bottom. There we go, and uh, this rubber hammer right here. Pop her home, and uh, we'll put our hardware back on there next. 
socket. Set the torque wrench here. These are 18 foot pounds. There we go, that's set. <clears throat> and uh, on these, they got a flat washer and then a lock washer and then the bolt or nut, excuse me. It always gets my nuts and bolts mixed up. I'll call them a nut, a bolt, and vice versa. There we go, flat first. Clean the hardware, of course. We have to remember to install our clutch arm for our preload tube. You don't want to forget that. You get under the car and the preload tube won't have anywhere to go. Which isn't good. That's what keeps the clutch from chattering. Now we got a spring washer. I hear the dog out there getting in trouble because some bees uh, not watching it. I hate that kind. Ready. A couple more washers here. There we go. Seem to be missing one. That there is a replacement. Okay, now we got the nuts. Using the old hardware. Messy! Mm hmm. Got a defective, defective nut there. Get rid of that one. So yep, saw a Sunday morning story video there, Mr. Blue Road uh, released. That was a pretty good one, man. I wouldn't scrap that one. I don't scrap them all. I put them up crappy or not, you know. Well, you got to lose. Right? You never know. You never know. All right, so let's tighten these up, and then we'll go ahead with the torque wrench. We'll just tighten them in a, uh, you know, crisscross pattern. Sorry to watch Greg's video, and then got distracted, so I got to go back in and finish watching his video. Haven't seen uh, any videos from Neil, so I already commented on my video. How you doing, Neil? Cheers. Let's just say. Hope everything's going good. Hope you're not too cold over there. Hope your heater's working out. And uh, saw a new guy. I don't know his uh, 
YouTube name, but he does spray chrome, which is going to be really cool. He's going to start making more videos, and uh, I think that's cool. I like that. And uh, most of the videos you see on that, the guys are doing it over in Europe, you know. So uh, that'd be cool. Some spray chrome. And uh, we might get back to doing some paint videos sooner or later. I don't know. But, uh, you know, Friday we have some uh, uh, YouTuber coming over. We're going to spray out some uh, test panels. We want to buy some paint. So we're going to uh, spray some different colors and uh, clear a panel. Maybe we'll make a video of that. Hopefully the thing will be gone. That's my plan anyway. I'm just going back around, they're all torqued. Double check, triple check. I hit the gearbox even though I didn't have it apart. Because uh, I don't reseal the gearbox. That's part of a rebuild. Mm -hmm. And uh, just because when you take the gearbox apart, you know, shit falls out of it. And it's got to go back in a jig. And uh, I'm going to do all that. I'm going to do a synchronizer and papers at least. So, so I retorque that. Hopefully that'll uh, slow the seepage down. Here's our spacer. Gonna drop that in. We've got our flange next. Going to put that on. Rubber hammer is a good idea. We have our uh, snap ring next. Sounds like you're having a hard time with the dog. You might have to assist. sure the snap rings in. It can be a real bummer if this comes off. Spits the, uh, the flange off, you know. And that's not good when that happens. So what I usually do here is, uh, uh, yep, got some right here. A little silicone. Clean this really good. With any grease, you know, because silicone and grease don't mix. Some guys think it did, but it don't. So, uh, there we go. Just want to make sure. Yeah. I'm not liking that snap ring. We're going to take that back out. And, uh, down a little bit. Trying to tighten the snap ring back up. Didn't like the way it was uh, biting on the flange there. It's not a real wide uh, Prove that it's in, you know, so you gotta be sure that you get it in there and that it's tight on both sides. And a lot of times when you uh, pry on them to take them out, we're good there, happy with that. That looks good. Much tighter. We'll move on to uh, the next thing I do is take a little silicone. It don't take a lot, you know. Get a little on your finger and uh, take some more than that. Got a small hole here. I 
put a little uh, jizz down there. It helps lock the O-ring in and uh, helps reseal the used uh, flange seals too. There we go. That's that side. Flip it over and uh, Yeah, we're going to flip it over, all right. How's that? That was a good catch. There we go. That was almost bad. That's the bad thing about these stands. Uh, training is very tippy when it's that way. Well, plus I'm weak, so. A normal guy that probably wouldn't have happened to you. So we got our spacer. Well, I thought we had a spacer. There it is. Well, that spacer's pretty important. Oh. Don't put that spacer on there, it'll uh Flange will just beat the O ring or the snap ring off for sure. Just put a tiny little bit of grease uh, on the flanges, on the splines. Keeps it from uh, being a pain in the ass next time you go to take it off. And we'll learn from the last one. We'll go ahead and tap this down a little bit. This one up. We'll uh, try to get the magic light here to work. Works whenever it wants now. Oh shit! Stands uh, out for my blood tonight. Or says. Oh yeah, she's in there, baby, like Prego. Now I got the nose cone still, forgot about that. Well, that's the rear end anyway. Let's get it straight, try not to hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. Your nose cone gasket. Whoa, flipping out. Flipping out. No editing here, boys. You're going to see it. Live at Memorex. What is it? Is that what it is? Memorex? Is it live or is it Memorex? That's us.
What's up, Autumn? What's up, Autumn Cat? You hungry? Oh, Mom Cat's hungry. She's always hungry. Let's put our green plug back in there. I'm tighten that real quick so I don't forget. That's bad when that happens. All right. Okay, baby. I like that video. Dressed and ready, just about. So he'll be impatiently facing the floor. Okay, well I'm just about done with this train. So I'm just saying he'll go early because there'll be people there. So. Okay. Stick your little grease up in the bushing there. Just a little tip makes it real smooth. That grease will actually, uh, if you get a good coat of grease on the shaft, it'll keep it from leaking. Transmission fluid. Don't pass the grease. So I'm gonna put a thin coat of this uh, aviation permatex on the the nose cone. And uh, yeah, you heard. We're ready to go. There goes the first uh, bus departing. And uh, I guess I'm gonna run the other one. Get a lot of that with kids. A lot of you guys are just having kids. I feel sorry for you in a way, but it's the best thing that can happen to you. I mean, your life just changes completely. When you have kids, uh, you find yourself working dark to dark. Somebody's dropping the kid off. Somebody's, you know, picking the kid up. And it's just, uh, it's a lot of work, man. I remember when me and Andrea first started out, I didn't think we'd survive it, but you do. Here we go. Yeah. Kaboom. You want to rock your hockey stick back and forth, make sure that, you know, it's in all the selectors. That little uh, drop and shit here. Spring washers. We have the nut. You guys, I'm trying not to. Well, I don't know. A lot of you guys like these videos. Try not to get you too bored with this thing. It's about done. So many of you guys like this stuff. A little uh, piece by piece component by component and uh, I know some of you guys get bored with them which I understand I get bored too but uh, it's one of the things that I remember and uh, later I'm going to do the wheel video because somebody wanted to know about how I blew my arm up and I, I realized that there's new guys watching my channel and uh, if you guys want to know that story, I'll tell it, you know. And uh, I'll try to get Andrea, because uh, she can tell parts that I don't know about. Uh, you know. So, uh, it was a life changer for sure. One of those things that you never forget. And uh, I think it was uh, somebody's way of getting my attention, to be perfectly honest with you. What's up, boy? You hungry? So these are just snug, you know, you don't have to get crazy. Uh, it's just a six millimeter, well, actually, it's a seven millimeter uh, thread. Somebody wanted to know if I knew any of the guys on overhauling that worked on that Volkswagen. And I knew Gary. I only know Gary. I know uh, a few of Gene's sons. 
And uh, if you look way back in my old videos, you'll see some old pictures from uh, Darlington, South Carolina, when I was very young, had hair. And uh, it was my first race ever in my Beetle. And uh, my car went 1166 off the trailer, which is pretty damn fast when the fastest you've ever been is 13s. And uh, I was really excited to go to that race. It was the first time I think I'd ever uh, traveled out of the state, you know, on my own. I was working for Scooter. And uh, it was a lot like being Scooter's kid when I worked there. You know, I was a young guy and uh, I pretty much followed his lead, you know. And uh, my parents had moved to North Carolina and that South Carolina race was the first time I'd been out of the state on my own, you know. Stayed in a hotel and took my car and all that stuff. And uh, we had put the car together. It was an 82 by 88 motor, a class motor. We used to class race and uh, wait for cubic inch. So it was a small cubic inch engine. And uh, they had had a truck pull at that racetrack on the track. They put sand on the track and uh, Clean the track up, you know, as best they could. And it was a crazy ass ride to first pass. And my uh, check valve got stuck in my Gene Berg pump cover. And uh, Gene Berg was actually at the race. That's the reason that uh, we went. Uh, Scooter and Gene were real good friends. Scooter would go uh, stay at their house for two weeks out of the year and uh, spend time down at the shop and stuff. And so Gary. Uh, moved on to do other things and Clyde the same and uh, Doug you know I really never kept up with Doug but uh, my uh, first time I raced I raced against the Black Bird car and uh, the other car that was there was uh, Ricky McGarity and uh, 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 the race shop Gia they were at the same race so if you go back and look at those pictures you'll actually see some photos of Gene Berg and you'll actually see a picture of uh, a young Gary Berg with his uh, girlfriend at the time and now uh, they're standing next to their race car and uh, they brought that car all the way from California in the back of a, a rider truck and uh, it was a pretty cool deal uh, awesome to race with those guys and uh, awesome to meet Gene Berg you know I mean I grew up with going to his seminars and got to meet him through Scooter several times uh, got to walk around with him at races and he used to love to film my car. I'm sure he's got video of it and pictures. Uh, if you know Gene, he used to walk around races and if something went wrong, he was there with the camera to document it. And uh, Gene Berg introduced me to my uh, first super stud at uh, Gainesville Raceway. I took a turbo car there and the head was coming off and I thought it was the wastegate popping and Gene pointed out that it was the heads coming off the, the car and uh we went and tried to torque the heads and it pulled the stud out of the case it was before i knew about case inserts and such and but i'd never been introduced to a super stud and uh he actually walked me through the midway there when they used to have parts vendors and we found a self-tapping uh 12 millimeter stud and screwed that baby into the case and uh raced that car went 690s that day and uh gene just loved it it would stand straight up on the uh back bumper you know we call it driving up on the ring gear now no wheel speed just uh crawling up on the transmission but uh it was fortunate that you know go to quite a few races that he went to and go to quite a few of the seminars and get to grow up in a shop where you know we were in uh, constant contact with uh berg when they were manufacturing cranks and doing machine work it was all that scooter would use so uh i was real fortunate to get to spend a lot of time with uh their stuff and uh, to race with them a couple times. So there we go, there's our tranny. And uh, yep, we'll call that one done. And uh, we'll get all that shit put back in the car. We got our tranny done, our motor done, our axles done, and uh, the car's just about done. I didn't do anything, we gotta rebuild the pedals maybe tonight, we'll do those. But, uh, here's the roll cage out here, I'll give you a little shot nothing special you know it's uh almost gray not black satin looking and uh, we get that bolted up and uh put in the car i gotta make some rubber pieces for the floor 
and stuff like that. I got this case cleaned up for this uh, gearbox we got to put together, so we'll get that painted and assemble that in the morning. And uh, getting rid of a few more things, you know, making a hole here or there. Got the tranny bench inside here because it started raining today, so uh, it's easier to clean it off in here anyway. So we're going to uh, probably uh, build that one out there that's the bear case next. And I think this is most of the stuff here I need. I got several trannies in here because some of the gears are going to get replaced. And uh, <clears throat> so you got to figure out what's what and uh, count the teeth and replace what I can and break some dogs off that are bad and try to make this gearbox work. And uh, we'll get that one together and then we'll bolt this one together next. This is a 412 box with a 12 volt bell housing. I'm just going to build this one just the tranny. I'm not putting the axles and stuff on. It's, you know, these short axle tubes are hard to find. So, all right, guys. Still sweating here in Florida. I'm going to go jump in the shower and uh, take on the football game. And uh, thanks for watching these uh, thing videos. And uh, hopefully, uh, maybe you guys got something from it. And uh, it's cool, man. I appreciate the new subscribers and the interaction. Some guys that just uh, watch or uh, picking the camera up and making videos, so that's cool. You know, we need we need some fresh blood. I'm sure people are tired of listening to VW and Aaron videos. So the more people that are making videos, the better. Uh, Mr. Roach, hope you're doing good. Give him a shout out real quick. And uh, yep. So here we go, guys. Uh, we'll talk to you later.